let's do it. Uh, cool. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about Sasquatches. <laughs> so before I get there, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, so I think it's important. I like to connect with my audience, and uh, I've been doing a lot of talking lately. And I know I have a, a very particular background that I know there's a lot of people out there that really would like to do like follow their dreams and, and get involved like I used to want to really bad and still do a couple years ago so not even two years ago I was active duty in the Navy uh, didn't know how to program at all had no idea how to get involved uh, but I wanted to uh, so after I got medically discharged out the Navy I moved to San Francisco was homeless me and my brother um, learned to code once an amazing program hacker actor learn how to program uh, <laughs> um, after that, soon after, uh, teaching became a hobby of mine. I started teaching people to program what I learned and, and giving back and helping other people reach their goals. Uh, did that full time for a while. Um, and now, not even, not even two years of being out the Navy, uh, I'm a senior friend engineer at Udacity. So it's, it's been a journey. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm also the co-creator of Angular Class, a workshop where we do Angular training uh, on the weekend. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you guys about Sasquatches. So whatever you think you know about Sasquatches, just forget it, because it's not that, all right? It's totally not that. This, this is something to do with Angular applications and why is it important for you. So let's get started. Um, but before we get there, let's take a, let's take a trip. When you, when you made your first Angular app. You guys remember the first time you made the Angular app? And you were like, oh my god. Like you called your grandma and you were like, grandma, we don't have to use jQuery anymore. <laughs> we can use directives. Like they got this thing and it's like, it's like so declarative, it's like legit. So like you were just like ng all the things. Like everything ng. Like I'm going to get every single thing that has ng on it and I'm going to use that. Because that's what the doc says. That's what the doc says. So I'm going to use it. Bind everything, right? You got this sweet mustache-like, you know, template system, and you can just stick it in there, and it's just going to work. So instead of just writing some static content in HTML, I'm going to write it in JavaScript. I'm going to bind it anyway, even though it's never going to change. I'm just going to bind it because it's awesome. <laughs> and then I'm going to filter it because it, we can do it because it's just great. Uh, and then watch everything that moves. Every single thing that moves in this app, we're going to watch it, and then we're going to do something. We're going to watch it, and then we're going to go to the server, and we're going to come back, and we're, we're going to do everything, right? Uh, so I literally grabbed, this is code that I found on the internet uh, um, from somebody who was learning Angular. And I think this is like a production app. Uh, and they're just really not taking a lot of stuff into consideration and they're doing a lot of the stuff that we just talked about. Like just, you know, not really taking into consideration of the ng repeat and stuff like that. Um, so because of those bad habits, your apps are probably crawling, right? Your apps are just like so janky, like you don't even care. But it was so fun, right? ng everything. So it's just like... That's a good trade-off, right? Our users are disappointed, but our developers have fun, so <laughs> it's a good trade-off, right? Um, but really, you know, you guys, you know, what, that's happening because of the thing that we love so much, and that's the digest cycle, right? So I like to describe the digest cycle as like the engine behind Angular's magic, right? The thing that we love so much, that's the digest cycle. But when it comes to performance, it's your worst friend. And I say friend because it really is our friend, but it's like our worst friend. So you can think of it as like the friend that you tell all your secrets to, that knows everything about you, but then goes behind your back where you're not watching and tells everybody those secrets, right? That's the digest cycle. That's exactly what it does. And that enemy is performance. It's behind your back, it's like performance. Nah, man, you don't want to hang out with this guy. Like, he's, he sucks. And the performance is like, all right, all right. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, so it's still our friend. Um, and it's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's not, it's not Mishko's fault. It's not the English team's fault. It's, it's your fault. Uh, so we're going to talk about how we can fix it. Uh, so long digest cycles hurt, right? Uh, the more watchers you have, the longer the digest. So that's pretty much what's causing the jank. Uh, processing all those watchers can, can kill performance, right? Uh, so what we want to do is we want to limit those watchers and speed up the digest cycle. Um, so what can cause a digest? Well, here's some of the things I can call a digest. So you can do apply, and that starts a digest cycle off at the root scope, which most of the built-in stuff in Angular does. Uh, you can also call a digest, which starts off at the current scope and goes all the way down to its children. Uh, so a little more performant if you, if you, if you use it the right way, like with isolate scopes or whatnot. Uh, and then, of course, the built-in directives and services like ng-click and HTTP 
which use scope.apply eternally. So these are some of the, the main ways that the digest cycle is going to run, which means we have control over this stuff. The scope.apply and scope.digest, if we have control of when they're being called, because we have control of what's using them, and we have control of when we're going to write them. So it really is all our fault. So we need to be more uh, aware of that stuff. So finally, everyone has been asking me for months, what is a Sasquatch? Well, that's a Sasquatch, all right? <laughs> that is a Sasquatch. But really, what a Sasquatch is in Angular, it's the watchers you didn't know you were making, because you are making them. You're making a whole bunch of them, and you don't even know it. Or maybe you do know it, and you don't care, right? <laughs> it's the watchers that came with the third-party module. You know that NG, NSA module you downloaded, and it's like watching everything in your app? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Sasquatch. It's watching everything, everything that moves. You don't even know it. The watchers that manifested from nowhere, like, oh, I, you know what? I didn't even write any JavaScript yet. I didn't even download a third-party module, but for some reason, there's watchers already there. I don't know. That's, that's Sasquatch, right? So let's actually get into some examples here. So I actually have an app that we're going to use. <laughs> Let me get it to show up. OK. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, I don't know why that's so off. All right, can you guys see that? Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> so this app right here is what we're going to use to actually count watchers. So I'm using this amazing tool called NG Stats by the marvelously talented Kinsey Dodds uh, to help us count the watchers and the digest times. So before we do this, let's go look at some code so we, so we can get some context of what's happening here. So what I did was I asked, 50, I asked 50 developers, 50 Angular developers of all skill levels, I was like, hey, can you just read this HTML and tell me, just count how many watches you think, or think is happening. So I'm going to read this like the average person did. So bear with me. So let's see if we can go to this HTML and actually count how many watches we're going to have. So if we go to the intro.js, this scope.nums, this is just an array of 10 things. Uh, and then we have this splice function. Uh, so if you go in here, OK, so this is what the average Angular JS developer did. They said, OK, you have this ng repeat, num and nums. Don't see any watchers here. Uh, you have this ng model up here. No, you're not using the, the, the binding syntax, so that's not a watcher. <laughs> then they came out here and was like, ng class? Oh, yeah, that's definitely a watcher. So we have 10, so that's 10 watchers, boom. And then they're like, of course, that's a watcher. So now we have another 10. So we, should, we have 20 watchers. That's what they said. That's what the average person said. But if we go over here, we actually have 24. We have 24. Sasquatches, right? We actually have 24. So where the other four come from? Well, let's check it out. Let's just get rid of these guys. If we clicked one, we noticed the digest ran. It took a hell of a long time. Uh, and then it got rid of two. That makes sense, because in our code, we said each uh, item had an ng class binding and also this binding here. So that makes sense for two to get rid of. So our count was pretty accurate there. So if we get rid of all these, uh, and we just get rid of all of them on the page, we're still left with four. Where'd those four come from, right? Uh, so let's go check it out. Well, this ng model right here actually does create one because this input uh, element is not an element, it's a directive. Uh, and it's, it's creating a binding right here to the input's value with this. So that's one. And also, there's a watch right here on this array, right? If it changes due to filtering or something else, that's also a watch generated. But that only brings us down to two. Where the other two come from, right? And quite honestly, the only way you're going to find that out is if you do some digging. So, and this is not from a third party model or anything. So, an Angular actually. Uh, by default, watches uh, the anchor scroll and the location by default. You get those two watches just from Angular, just from downloading it, you automatically have those two watches. So those will always be there. So those are, those are SAS watches. You didn't even know they existed, but they were there. Uh, <laughs> so let's go into some more examples that I, that I found on the, on the nets. Um, let's go into uh, an example that I saw people using like forms. So we have this one example of this person who was using ng, uh, ng hide and ng click very exclusively. Uh, to just like toggle a simple form, right? And we know the difference between ng hide and then show and if. If gets rid of it from the DOM, show and hide, does some CSS to, to show it and hide it. Uh, but, and, and you know, th there's definitely use cases for that. We set them like event bindings and stuff like that. But in this example, they're, they're really not. Uh, so what's happening here is we are just going to toggle uh, a different show, or I'm sorry, a different HTML based on like this edit mode. Uh, model here. So let's see if we can count the stuff in here. Let's see. Uh, and, the, and again, I'm doing it like the average developer. Uh, so ng show, oh yeah, that's one, that's two, that's three, 
Um, where else? Oh. oh, no, not that one. That's three. And then what else do we have? Did I pass anything else? And then four right here. I thought it was an NG class on here. Maybe not. So we have four. Let's actually go and, and see what the Sasquatch count says. It says we have eight. So we actually have more than what we actually counted. So how did that happen? And this is exactly what people did. They counted this, and they, they said it was four. So they actually like undercounted. So what's really happening here is because although ng show and ng hide are, are not on the page, as you can see as we toggle them, the, the count never changes. It's because the, the bindings are already set up. They're just being hit by CSS. They've already been established. They've already been linked. The watchers have already been registered. The CSS is just hiding them. Uh, so what you really want to do in this case, because we're, we're not really setting up any events on any of, the, on any of this HTML, we want to use a different approach. So let's, oh, God, scrolling is ridiculously fast. Let's just comment that guy out. And we're going to use this other solution, which uses uh, ngif. And let's see how many watchers we have now. So now we only have five. And we get the same stuff. The big switch was we just used ngif. So yeah, we had to write a little more HTML. Uh, and it was like really repetitive. We really wrote like the same HTML twice. But we don't get to set up those bindings, which is really, really awesome. Again, this is only a specific use case if you don't have like events set up with, like jQuery and like, you know, those click events and stuff like that. Uh, so let's go to a, another example where people are just using ng everything, right? And we're going to get to this in a little bit. So here's an example of a person, uh, simple ng repeat, card in cards, uh, have this ng mouse enter, and then on mouse enter, it's just going to run this function. Uh, this function, all it does, uh, if, it's, if it's an even element, it's just going to show a toast. That's all it's going to do, right? So that's really all that's happening here. So if we go in here, notice, even if I hover over an element that is not uh, even, the digest runs. See? The digest is running right here. By the way, even and odd is determined by uh, a calculation on the, on the index, not the actual position in the array. So if you were expecting this to be even, it's not. It's by the index. It's not because it's the second thing in the array. So uh, the digest is still running, but although the toast is not firing, that's because this ng mouse enter is going to wrap this entire thing into scope.apply. It's going to happen every single time you mouse enter this element. But we only want to run the function when it's even. So why are we wasting digest time, digest cycles doing it? It doesn't make sense, right? We have this stuff firing only on even. So what we want to do instead, and just not be lazy, is just get rid of this guy. And we want to use our own directive that we made. Uh, and we're just going to call it on mouse enter. And it does the exact same thing. So the code for that looks like this. It's just going to use this thing called jQuery, right? You guys know what jQuery is. You told your grandma about it. And on mouse enter, it's going to say, hey, is this thing even? Yeah, OK. I'm just going to evaluate the given function. The scope.eval is going to evaluate the, the expression, which does not actually trigger digest. Uh, but if, we're, if for whatever reason we, we want it to uh, change some, some scope stuff here, we could just wrap this into scope.apply, and we still have control over it. So if we go back, uh, oops, if we go back to this guy, and now that we did it, notice when I hover over something that's or anything, the digest just doesn't run at all. No digest. But yet, we still get the same functionality that we want. So these small little increments here actually speed up your application. These small little changes that doesn't take that much effort will totally, totally help you out. Uh, another small one is you know, this really nice feature of unwatching your watchers. Because we all just want to watch everything, right? Like, let's just watch it. Uh, so what's happening in this example is, you click this, you get a random number. If it goes higher than 10, it shows a toast, right? So we get a toast if it's higher than 10. And we want it to stop after it's 10. But after it showed the toast, the count still says 4. It's still watching it. So let's just use this awesome feature that's built in Angular. And let's just say bar, I cannot see from back here, equal that. And then what we're going to do is once we finally get the thing that we want, we can just invoke this function, which is going to cancel the watch for us. So let's check it out. So if we did this right, this count should go down once the number goes over 10. Oh, oh. OK. <laughs> there it is. It did it. So now it's 3. So you totally want to do that, because in most cases, people watch things just for one time, and then that's it. But then they just keep watching it. For, like, it's, you should not be doing that. It's a small change. 
and it's going to totally speed up your application. Um, another thing is, I have this, I'm going to talk about filters for a little bit. Uh, and Ken C. Dodds has this amazing thing. I was just going to make it myself, but he, he already did it because it's really, really great. Uh, he's, he's using filters in here, filters and ng repeat. This is, this is a big thing. This is what kills a lot of apps. You know, people like make this huge table, ng repeat with a directive or another ng repeat, and like triple filters that like go to the server and like come back. And it's just like, oh my God, like how, how do you expect to have a really good UI? So here's an example. Let's put, I don't know, 50 things on the page. And let's delay the filter just by, let's start off with no, nothing. So right now, when you hover over these things, they do an ng mouse enter and ng mouse uh, leave. And they just change the CSS on the stuff. So it's pretty performant. Digest is running, not even a millisecond. You know, 115 watchers on the page, great. Let's just increase it to one millisecond. And watch, 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 this, watch this time right here. Just one millisecond. Boom. Look at that. One millisecond delay in your filter. And look at that. Oh my God. What is that? Like, <laughs> just one millisecond. And this is just one filter. So you have people doing like multiple filters, doing like async things, and like, oh man. So, yeah, that's another thing. Totally don't do that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's going to be it for the example. So now I'm going to go on a little bit more on the slides. So, uh, oh yeah, I guess I forgot that. Any watch here you're not aware of, filter optimized. Um, but we want smooth apps, right? We all want smooth apps, right? Uh, so limit your watchers. Please limit your watchers. You can do it. Uh, limit digest calls. Like, we just went over a, a small example of how you might be able to do it. Try your best to limit and be like completely aware of like when you're doing it. Uh, don't ng overdo it. All right, everybody just wants to, like I think people are scared that like they're going to get disowned by the Angular team. Like like if they push something up to GitHub, GitHub's going to reject it because they didn't use the ng directive. Like you can you can write your own stuff. You don't have to use ng everything. Nobody's going to hate you, right? So just just don't ng overdo it. Use jQuery Lite and, and uh, or jQuery for for the DOM events, setting up listeners versus the uh, directive equivalents. Uh, use ng repeat responsibly. It can, uh, it can exponentially increase digest times. So if you're doing like nested ng repeats, like think about it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get pretty nasty. So use it responsibly. Uh, and avoid filters and ng repeat or keep them under one millisecond. Uh, so I got this quote right here. Uh, <laughs> if your filters take more than one millisecond, it won't scale. And that's from uh, Aaron Frost over there, Mick Frosty, AKA. Uh, so this is what he said, and it totally makes sense. We just saw an example where I creased the filter to one millisecond, and it just broke everything. Um, and I, I'm pushing for this, and I really urge you guys to, to think about it. I, I, will, I would like everyone to commit to just not using these directives at all. I just don't see any point, any use case, that you would ever need to use these directives. You should, you should just get rid of them. You should just not even use them. That's what I'm going to say today. So, uh, but if you have a good argument of why you think you need to use these, then please let me know, because I looked and I just couldn't figure out a compelling argument on why you ever need to use these directives. So if anybody's still using them, let me know why, because I want to know what you know. Okay? Uh, use optimizations built into 1.3. Uh, One-time bindings are awesome. Uh, NG model options, Ken C. Dodge has talked about that. The debounce and update on can really save you. Uh, depending on, like, the debounce is tricky because it's like you don't want to debounce too much and it's, it's slow and you, you can't debounce a lot. So you got to figure out the right, the right timing for that. And try not to use stateful filters. That's a new feature uh, that's built in. So, so you're not caching those filters. Uh, you get that nice benefit. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, and continue to uh, watch those Sasquatches.